I'm sure everybody who's on the call so far has heard that saying about loan officers who did really well in 2020 and 2021, and that we were just order takers back then. And now is when the market's going to differentiate and weed out the people who aren't really great at this business. But I want to offer an alternative perspective here. I want to say I was proud to be an order taker in 2020 and 2021. I took a lot of orders. It was pretty sweet, like 300 each year. And I know a lot of other loan officers who didn't take that many orders. They didn't have the brand for people to know that they could take their order in the first place, or they didn't have the systems in place to push through that kind of volume, or they weren't using Mortgage Coach to differentiate themselves from other order takers. So before I dive into my script, I want to bring your attention to the fact that this is a foundation laying year where you get your business right and you get it tight so that when market conditions shift, you're ready to be the best order taker ever. You're ready to have big wins. That's what I did from 2017 to 2020. And I can tell you it's very rewarding when that shift happens. You're here watching Scriptapalooza, investing in yourself, taking the time to take notes and learn everything and absorb it all because you're planting your seeds so that you can capitalize on the next order taking season. And I just want to say good on you for doing that. Now, right now, I think one of the hardest things for us in the real estate industry, and this includes your realtor referral partners, is outside noise. Because even though folks are very distrusting of the media, the media is still able to get into their heads with every headline about the housing market and interest rates being negative and doomsday. And then they see our social media telling them not to be upset about interest rates that are seven and a half percent because that's historically low. Well, historically, starter homes didn't cost $500,000, did they? So I imagine you have people coming into your office or calling you. And before you can even get to your rate script that you learned today or show them your total cost analysis, you're actually having to defend the concept of home ownership. You actually have to sell the American dream now when it used to be a given. Millennials either own homes or believe they never will. I recently saw a headline on that that had exact percentages. And because people are ready for home ownership a little bit later in life these days, they're more set in their ways by then. They want to live a certain way. They're used to certain amenities. They probably already have kids and need to be in a certain neighborhood. So renting is a big obstacle for us because I think it's less about the American dream these days and more about a quality of life choice. If I can't afford to buy where I want to live, maybe I'll just rent. So my script for today is about objections, but rather than being prepared for them or having your script ready for them, I want you to focus on finding the fear behind people's objections, objections that have been drilled into their head by the outside world that definitely has their own motives, but is not at all as invested in their financial future as you are. So let's say that Kathy calls you and I'm going to be Kathy. So I want to get pre-approved, but I'm not even sure if now is the right time for me to buy. I'm not sure if I'll qualify for enough. I've heard that home prices are about to tank, but I've also heard they're very high. And I don't really want to buy at the top of the market. I'm worried about this upcoming recession because in the Great Recession, my parents had to short sell a home. And I was just graduating college at that time into a really shitty job market. So I've made a lot of calculated and careful decisions over the past 10 years. And I don't want to mess it all up now by making a wrong move and investing in real estate at the wrong time. I don't want to undo a decade of work towards financial stability. So I bet some of you guys have had lead calls like this, right? This is not sounding unfamiliar or strange. So at this point, I'm back to being the loan officer. I'm listening very sincerely and patiently, to Kathy, because I really want to gather a lot of information here about what she's feeling and what she's saying. And those are two different things. They might be aligned, but those are two different things. What is she feeling and what is she saying? So I'm not cutting her off to combat her objections. I'm not interjecting. I'm not rushing to provide all the data that I know indicates that we're not heading into a housing crash. I'm letting her lay out all these fears and expand on them fully. I'm not talking fast. I'm allowing for a little silence to make sure she completely finishes her train of thought. And then I'm going to say, those are great concerns. And I'm honestly glad to hear that you're taking this very seriously because it is a big financial move. Honestly, if you weren't asking me these questions right now, and if you weren't concerned about these things right now, you might not be ready to make such a big move in your life. I want to validate her feelings because I want to, I want to commend her for caring enough and for being aware enough and for not having her head in the sand. 
And then what I'm trying to do is create a safe space so that she'll be able to bring future concerns up to me. If someone gets in her ear about interest rates or about my bank or about a different loan program that we haven't discussed yet or that we did discuss and rule out, but she forgot, I want to create a safe space where she's allowed to air out her concerns. And that's starting right now in this first conversation. I'm building connection between us so that I can start earning her trust. So then I'm going to ask her, what do these concerns mean to you specifically? And she might be caught off guard and it might be a little bit awkward here. And I think, hopefully Phil thinks so too, that that's okay because we want to find out why she's worried about a housing crash. And it's okay to prompt her. You could say, Kathy, you mentioned your parents had a short sale and that you don't want to buy and have home values go down. Can you expand on that for me? Can you help me understand? And she will go on about how it would be terrible to buy a home and then have the value go down right after she made her investment. And then you will explain that that's not likely to happen based on market data or rates of forecasted appreciation, supply and demand. You'll go over a return on investment scenario with her. But then you would say, what about the potential of your home value going down after you purchase scares you the most if it were to actually happen? I think she probably doesn't know. And that's what I've encountered most of the time in my conversations with clients. They probably haven't thought that far. They got so scared about the concept of their home value tanking or about a housing crash or about being upside down that they don't even really know like, well, what happens to me if that happens? And so this is where you can come in and educate them that just because your home value goes down doesn't mean the bank automatically comes in and takes away your home. It's not like home value down, big blaring red siren, you're homeless. No, you just keep making your payment. And it is my job, Kathy, right now to make sure that you end up with a payment that you can actually afford. That's what I do. And so even in the very unlikely worst case scenario of your value dropping, nothing's going to happen to you. You're just going to keep making your payment. And then I can show you how over time, the value of real estate tends to go up and the times that it has dipped a little, it rebounds. So that would likely happen for you too. The strategy here is to listen for the fear behind their objections and to truly be listening for what they're not saying and then help them say it because there's tons of outside noise right now. And we want to help people tie it down and to what it actually means for them, because then that enables them to make an informed decision. That informed decision may not be to buy today, but I'm going to help you gather all the information you need to make that decision from an educated place. So I think in order to do this in wrapping up, you need to do three things. You need to listen and allow for silence, even if it's uncomfortable. Don't be planning your arguments and don't be preparing your script. Just listen. And then validate and create a safe space. And then lastly, get to the real fear so you can address it because then you're really able to move forward with them to help them closer towards their goals.